Welcome to our continuing series, America's Broke. Um, I just want to have a conversation with you here for, for just a second before we start. We are selling our country out. Our, our country is becoming a pawn shop and it's being sold for power and, and money and politics. Where is the person that is representing you? I mean, you've seen all of this stuff happen this week. What, who is the person that's representing our country and says, no, wait, this isn't the right thing for our country? I, 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 I'm t to a place, don't listen to these politicians. Listen to your gut. Listen to yourself. You just, you know instinctively, you know things like can't, th these, things, th these things can't last. When it comes to energy, you know we're going to need energy. Why are we listening to people that tell us that we don't need energy? Why do we keep listening to people that say that it's more free stuff? It's never, ever free. These bailouts, you know, that we went, we went and we're actually thinking about selling one of our investment banks to China. China is sending us baby milk with poison in it. What, what is happening to us? With Social Security, you know, look. I'm 45 years old. I'm never going to see Social Security. You know it and I know it. If you're 65, why are you retiring? I have a father who's 85 years old. He's not able to work. I have another group of parents that are 65 years old. They're not retired. Why would you retire? You're not useless at 65. You're needed at 65. Please do the patriotic thing and don't retire when you're 65 years old. If you are somebody who's working a low-paying job, you're not a loser. You can make it. Don't listen to anybody who tells you that you can't make it. You're not a failure. And there is a difference between failure and a loser. Failure leads to success. Losers stop trying to be successful. Where is the person that will just tell us the straight truth? America, this has been a hard week. I fear for our country. I fear that my children will not be able to have the country that I had when I was a kid. You want it as much as I do. Remember what you were like on 9-10? On 9-10, you were, had your head in the sand. On 9-11, if you were like me, you were freaking out. You didn't know what was coming. But on 9-12, we knew what was important to us, and we were willing to do the hard thing for our country. We were willing to do it for our children. Are you a 9-10 person that has your head back in the sand? Are you a 9-11 person that is just freaking out? Or will you please join me as a 9-12-er? Somebody who's willing to do the tough things. We can accomplish anything. We are the country that changed the world. And if you'll just be that 9-12 person, we will change it again. Our guest tonight, David Walker, the former Chief Comptroller of the United States and President and CEO of Peter Peterson Foundation and Robert Bixby is the executive director of the Concord Coalition, nonpartisan group dedicated to fiscal responsibility. David, I have to, I have to start with you. I, I um, right before I went on the air, I met with a guy who is an immigrant to our country, and he, um, ha, it's so uh, close to me today because I, he said, you know, uh, how you doing? And I said, fine. And I could just, just seeing him made me think, I wonder if he's ever really going to see America at its best with the way we're treating it right now. We're selling us, we're selling us down the river and nobody's really paying attention. Agree or disagree? Well, America's for sale. I mean, America is, is mortgaging its future. It's mortgaging the future of our children and grandchildren. You know, we've seen a lot of disruptions here this week and in recent times with regard to the subprime crisis. But what people don't realize is the same factors that led to this subprime crisis with regard to the financial institutions and the mortgage-based securities exist for the federal government's finances. So the real question is, are we going to do what we need to in the short term, but are we going to prevent the super subprime crisis which is the federal government's finances. Okay. Bob, the, um, uh, this, you, you have access to a new study that shows that Americans are willing to do the hard thing, right or wrong. That's absolutely true. I mean, if Americans are told the truth uh, and realize what the stakes are, particularly for their children and grandchildren, they're willing to make some sacrifices and make some tough choices. They're not being asked of that uh, by the politicians, and they're not being given the, uh, the truth about our fiscal situation. Okay. Here's my problem, and maybe I don't know either one of you can answer this. My problem is I am willing to do the truth. I, I am willing to sacrifice for my children's sake and for my grandchildren's sake. But I am not willing to give people another dime. I'm not willing to say, 
No, you can take my Social Security money that I'm paying every month and, and pay down the debt or do whatever we need to do. I'm not willing to do that because I believe they'll spend it on something else. Well, I hate to tell you, Glenn, they've already spent the Social Security trust funds. I mean, it's really an oxymoron. I mean, and only the government would call the Social Security trust fund a trust fund. It does not the same as Webster's Dictionary. You know, what we need to recognize is is that ultimately we need to have some tough budget controls because Washington is spending a dollar twenty or more for every dime that it gets. Uh, I wouldn't send another dime to Washington unless and until there are tough statutory budget controls. At the same point in time, we're going to have to reform Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. We're going to have to reprioritize and constrain spending. We're going to have to reform the tax code and our health care system. We may need more revenues down the road, but not until we do these other things. Okay, Bob, we ain't getting another I can't, I, ugh. Um, Bob, help me out on this. They're talking now about lowering our credit rating. Just They were talking about this back in January because of Social Security and Medicare. But now uh, they're talking about taking our credit rating and lowering it as a nation, which is the same kind of thing if you go in to buy a car, if you've got poor credit, you're going to pay more in interest. Just lowering the credit rating, and now they're really talking about doing it because of what we've done in the last week, Does that takes everything we've said about the 53 trillion dollars and throws that out the window. It's much worse if they lower our credit rating, right? Sure, there are a lot of things. We'd have to pay higher interest rates and with the debt that we're carrying and the new deficits piling up each year, that would uh, be a direct cost to the taxpayers. You know, we, we pay about 230 or 40 billion dollars a year in interest uh, costs already. It's about 9 percent of the budget and that's a direct cost of running deficits and interest rates are low. Uh, the federal uh, government's borrowing rate is low. So if it goes uh, higher, which it would tend to do if we're going to have to attract capital and, and have a, a lower bond rating, then um, it's going to cost more. Yeah. David, um, uh, your pen on your lapel is the um, Sons of the American Revolution. We've talked about this before. I know you are an honorable man, and I know it drove you crazy to be in Washington and actually uh, to be instructed to, oh, just put it on another book. Just make another book. We now have a fourth set of books um, because of the mess we, we made. If, if, if somebody would have walked into your office and said, oh, by the way, we're buying Freddie and Fannie and just put it on a fourth set of books, what would you have said to them this week? What, what, what kind of advice from the inside, being the chief bean counter, would you have said to these people? Well, first, I think Washington is out of touch and out of control. Uh, I think Washington did not have adequate oversight and intervention when we had clear warning signals going off. I would help them to understand that, look, we may need to do some things in the short term to try to deal with the immediate disruption, but we need to start dealing with our fiscal cancer. We need to learn lessons from this to make sure that we don't allow okay. the same thing to happen on a much bigger scale. I've asked you this before, and last night I had these two guys on, and I got calls about it on my radio show last night. Both of them shifted a little bit and tried to make sure that the Republicans were better than the Democrats, or the Democrats were better than the Republicans, and you've held these guys up as great leaders on this. How can, I mean, we've got, we've got Ron Paul on in a second, and I've got to tell you something, Ron Paul's going to be mad as hell, and there ain't anybody. There are, everybody calls him an idiot for saying financial disaster is coming. How do you get people to move? They're still not willing to move this week. First, the American people need to get informed and involved. The American people need to understand the future of our country, their children and grandchildren are at stake. They need to ask tough questions. They need to hold our elected officials accountable for what they do or fail to do. It's absolutely critical that the next president make this a priority. If they do, we can turn things around. If they don't, we could have a super subprime crisis. Okay. Guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, that's uh, what's coming up in our future. Now, if you missed any part of our Exposed series this week, please go over to glenbeck.com and sign up for my free email newsletter. In tomorrow's edition, we will include links of all of the videos, the transcripts, and the information that you need to get up to speed and hold these weasels, their feet to the fire. That's in my email newsletter. You can sign up for it right now at glenbeck.com, and it is completely free.